Meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, Ladies and gentlemen, I open the 62nd regular annual general meeting of Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft from Berlin City Cube and assume the role of the chair of the meeting according to the Articles of Association. I would like to welcome you, shareholders, ladies and gentlemen of the media, and all the other viewers and listeners also on behalf of my colleagues on the supervisory board and on the board of management. Because of the extensive planning and preparation that is required for our annual general meeting, the decision as to whether the, we would have an in-person meeting or a virtual one had to be happening at the beginning of December already. With a view to the protection of the health of shareholders, staff and service providers and for reasons of planning and legal certainty, the Board of Management decided in line with COVID-19 legislation and with the consent of the supervisory board to hold this year's annual general meeting as a virtual one again. We limited the number of participants here in the City Cube to just a few people. Apart from myself, the deputy chair of the supervisory board, Mr. Hoffmann, is present as well as the entire board of management. Mr. Hoffmann, just like myself, will answer the questions directed to the supervisory board and will deputize for me should I be unable to continue chairing the meeting. The further members of the supervisory board are linked via video and audio links. The notary public, Mr. Rucky, is also present, who will write the notary's minutes as stipulated by the Joint Stock Operation Act. Also in attendance are the proxies of of the company. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's annual general assembly happens under extraordinary circumstances. The war in Ukraine marks a turning point in history. Russia's attack on Ukraine on the 24th of February this year ended more than 30 years of peaceful coexistence, a phase of economic cooperation and political alignment. A political and human tragedy is unfolding in front of our eyes. Our thoughts are with the many people in Ukraine who are faced with a war of aggression. People who lost family members and their homes and now are fleeing from violence and destruction. The suffering and the horrible pictures that keep coming to us for many weeks are very hard to bear. Therefore, we hope to a, an end of fighting as soon as possible and a return to diplomatic endeavors. I speak here on behalf of the entire supervisory board and the workforce of the group. Even if we continue to do our work, it is extremely difficult in these days for us. Later, Dr. Dies will be talking about the effects of the war on our enterprise. Now, let's first of all look back on fiscal year 2021. Despite the continued challenges from COVID-19 and the uh, difficult shortcomings because of the supply of semiconductors, Volkswagen Group, because of its robust business model, was able to conclude fiscal 2021 above the pre-corona level. Transformation towards a tech company has specifically made major progress with the decision to change the plants in Germany and the United States to produce battery-driven cars. These major, pro these major progress with the implementation of the new auto strategy are not least the result of a great team effort. I would like to show our great gratitude and special appreciation to the Board of Management, the Works Council, the management, all employees of Volkswagen and the affiliated companies. They deserve our special gratitude and our special appreciation. With a view to more and challenges as yet unknown when it comes to the scope, all of them have personally worked very hard and have shown a lot of responsibility and made a major contribution so that the Volkswagen Group can look back to a very successful fiscal year 2021. 
Later, Dr. Dees and I will explicitly talk about the strategic challenges that we are faced with, and we'll talk about the cooperation of the bodies and committees in catering for them. First of all, please allow me to talk about the formal matters for today's AGM. The annual general meeting was convened according to the Articles of Association. The convocation of the AGM was published on the 15th of March 2022 in the Federal Gazette. Upon request of Qatar Holding Germany GmbH, according to Article 122.2 Joint Stock Cooperation Act, an addition to the agenda was made public on the 20th of April 22 in the Federal Gazette. Ladies and gentlemen, this year we will also have a list of participants in attendance. Um, this will include the proxies of the company present here. Information on our this year's virtual AGM you will find on the Investor Relations Internet web page under a General Assembly. Our shareholders can listen to the entire AGM via the shareholders portal. The public broadcast will include the speech by Mr. Dees and the report of the Supervisory Board. In order to be able to have adic to adequately um, have your shareholders' rights being represented in the virtual AGM, we have given you the opportunity in line with COVID-19 legislation to cast a postal vote or to use representatives, proxies or of the company or third parties. Entitled to vote are only ordinary shareholders and their representatives. Regularly registered shareholders had the right before the AGM to ask questions to the matters of the agenda through the shareholders portal. We will subsequently, to our reports, come to those questions. Registered shareholders, moreover, were given the opportunity to provide video statements before the AGM. The video statements can be viewed on our internet page. If you want to register an objection against a decision or resolution of this AGM, you can do so through the shareholders portal. This function has been opened at the beginning of the AGM and it will stay open till the end of the AGM. As usual, there won't be any recording allowed for the AGM and we won't have a verbatim record of the AGM. So far, as regards the formal, ne formal notifications, ladies and gentlemen, traditionally at the beginning of our annual general meeting, we remember those who passed away before we start with the agenda. Just like in the last years, we don't just want to remember the Volkswagen colleagues who passed away. The Volkswagen Group has customers and business partners in almost all of the countries of the world. It leaves us sad to see how many people still fall ill with COVID-19 and how many people cannot be saved. We are just as sad and shocked when hearing the news about the war in Ukraine. We want to show our compassion for the relatives of people who died from Corona in Germany and worldwide, as well as to the victims of the war. Please observe a moment of silence to honor those who passed away. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now give you a summarized report of the Supervisory Board and will talk about the changes in the Supervisory Board since the last annual general meeting and about the implementation of the recommendations of the German Corporate Governance Code. Subsequently, the Board of Management will give 
its report. Afterwards, we'll have the voting procedure. Ladies and gentlemen, let me first turn to the report of the supervisory board. Since the end of last year's regular annual general meeting, there have been two changes in the composition of the supervisory board of Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft. With effect, as of August 31st, 2021, Mr. Atanasio Stimoniaris, former chair of the Group Works Council of Trade and SE, resigned from his post as a member of the Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft supervisory board. Mr. Stimoniaris had been a member of the supervisory board board since 2015. Als Nachfolger wurde Herr Jens Mr. Jens Rote, chair of the General Works Council of Volkswagen Saxon GmbH, was appointed by the court to replace him with effect as of October 22, 2021. On the 28th of April 2022, the employees duly elected their representatives for the supervisory board. The election result was published in the Federal Gazette on May the 3rd, 2022. The term of office of the newly elected employee representatives will begin at the end of this annual general meeting. On behalf of all members of the supervisory board, I want to thank those members, Ms. Ulrike Jakob, Ms. Bettina Mokovic, and Dr. Hans-Peter Fischer, who are leaving the supervisory board in this process for their excellent cooperation. We are looking forward to working with the newly elected members of the supervisory board, Ms. Simone Mahler, Ms. Daniela Novak, and Dr. Arno Homburg. Ms. Mahler is the chair of the Works Council of Volkswagen Financial Services AG. Ms. Novak is the chair of the Works Council at the Braunschweig site. And Dr. Homburg was elected to represent the management staff. In addition, with effect from the end of today's annual general meeting, Dr. Hussein Ali Al Abdullah stepped down from the Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft Supervisory Board. I would also like to thank Dr. Al Abdullah on behalf of all the Supervisory Board members for the good cooperation. The shareholder Qatar Holding Germany GmbH has therefore filed a motion seeking to expand the agenda by adding the election of a successor to Dr. Al Abdullah and proposes the election of Mr. Mansour Ibrahim Al Mahmoud as successor for the remaining term of office of Dr. Al Abdullah. That's till the end of the general meeting that resolves on the formal approval of Mr. Al Mahmoud's actions for fiscal year 2024. Mr. Al Mahmoud is the CEO of Qatar Investment Authority. That's the Emirate of Qatar Sovereign Wealth Fund. He has many years of experience in managing diverse and complex organizations. In particular, since his appointment as a CEO of the Qatar Investment Authority, he has redefined its investment strategy with a stronger focus on ESG. Mr. Al Mahmoud will now introduce himself to you in a video message. Good afternoon. My name is Mansour Al Mahmoud. I am the CEO of QIA, the Sovereign Wealth Fund that invests for the future generation. I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak to all the Volkswagen shareholders today. I would like to start by telling you a little bit about myself. I have been the CEO of QIA since 2018. However, I have much longer history with the QIA, as I was part of the team that first established the fund back in 2005. During my career, I have led several financial organizations, such as Qatar Development Bank, as well as cultural institu institutions, including Qatar Museums. I am also a board member of a number of our organizations, including QNB, the largest bank in the Middle East. And I am a vice chairman of Qatar Airways. Over the past four years, I have been honored to lead the QIA as we have worked toward diversifying our portfolio and focusing on sustainability. We highly value our partnership with the companies we work with and our deep partnership with the Volkswagen is no exception. I have had the pleasure of working with the Volkswagen since 2009, when a QIA first invested 
in the company. The partnership between our two institutions has grown from strength to strength ever since, as our shared goals and vision have evolved. I believe that mobility is a fundamental to our lives as a human and will always be so. Yet, the technology transformation sweeping our world is profoundly impacting how we move and travel. Volkswagen is well positioned to be a leader in this new era of mobility. It has the right brands, the brains, and most importantly, the vision. If I become a member of the supervisory board, I will work closely with my colleagues on the board and with the management in fulfilling all of my obligation and responsibilities and in, the, in contribution to the future success of Volkswagen. Thank you. Thank you very much. The supervisory board takes the view that the proposal of Mr. Al Mahmoud as a candidate for election takes into account the objectives specified by the supervisory board with respect to its composition and the concept of diversity pursued with regard to its composition and seeks to comply with the profile of skills for the full board. The supervisory board therefore supports the proposal of Mr. Al Mahmoud as a candidate for election to the supervisory board. All documents relating to the proposal of Mr. Al Mahmoud's, Al Mahmoud as a candidate for election to the supervisory board, including his CV, which also provides information on relevant knowledge, skills, and professional experience, are available on our investor relations website. That concludes the update on the composition of the supervisory board. Ladies and gentlemen, the supervisory board's work in fiscal 2021 focused on the Volkswagen Group's strategic direction. In addition to various structural measures, this also included the composition of the board of management. The supervisory board regularly deliberated on the company's position and development in the reporting period. We supervised and supported the board of management in its running of the business and advised it on issues related to the management of the company in accordance with our duties under the law, the Articles of Association and the Rules of Procedure. We also observe the relevant recommendations and suggestions of the German Corporate Governance Code at all times. The supervisory board was directly involved in all decisions of fundamental importance to the group. Additionally, we discussed strategic considerations with the board of management at regular intervals. Ladies and gentlemen, the Board of Management complied with its disclosure obligations and provided us with information regularly, promptly and comprehensively, both in writing and orally, particularly on all matters of relevance to the company relating to its strategy, its business development and the company's planning and its position. This also included the risk situation and risk management. In this respect, the Board of Management also informed the Supervisory Board of further improvements to the risk and compliance management system. In addition, the Supervisory Board received information about compliance and other topical issues from the Board of Management on an ongoing basis. We received the documents relevant to our decisions in good time for our meetings. At regular intervals, we also received a detailed report from the Board of Management on the current business position and the forecast for the current year. Any deviations in performance from the plans and targets previously drawn up were explained in detail by the Board of Management, either in person or in writing. Together with the Board of Management, we analyzed the reasons for the deviations and determined corresponding countermeasures. In particular, the Board of Management reported in detail and in a timely manner on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the semiconductor supply situation and explained the measures that had been taken. I had regular meetings with the Chair of the Board of Management to discuss important current issues. These included, among others, the group strategy and planning, its business development, the risk situation and risk management, including integrity and compliance issues in the Volkswagen Group. 
But not only did the supervisory board have close consultations with the board of management, it also contributed to the dialogue with stakeholders. For example, as suggested by the German Corporate Governance Code, I discussed supervisory board specific topics with investors and in consultation with the board of management also non-supervisory board specific topics. The supervisory board held a total of 10 meetings in fiscal 2021. The average attendance rate was around 90 percent. You can find information on attendance by individual supervisory board members on page 13 of the annual report. In addition, resolutions on particularly urgent matters were adopted in writing or by using electronic communication media. The executive committee met 12 times in the reporting period, the nomination committee held one meeting, the audit committee four, and the special diesel engine committee convened two meetings. The mediation committee was not required to convene formally in the exercise of its statutory duties. However, in October 2021, the Supervisory Board entrusted the Mediation Committee with an additional task of developing a proposal for the future structure of areas of responsibility within the Board of Management and possible changes to the composition of the Board of Management. To this end, the Mediation Committee met six times. As the large number of meetings of the Supervisory Board and its committees indicates, the Supervisory Board again closely monitored and advised the Board of Management and discharged its other duties in fiscal year 2021. The Supervisory Board formed the Special Diesel Engine Committee, which was in existence from October 2015 to December 2021, comprised of three shareholder representatives and three employee representatives. The Special Diesel Engine Committee was responsible for supporting the investigations in connection with the manipulation of emission figures for Volkswagen Group diesel engines and preparing Supervisory Board resolutions for necessary measures at the supervisory board level. To this end, the special committee was provided with regular information by the board of management. The chair of the special diesel engine committee reported regularly on the committee's work to the supervisory board. The tasks of the special diesel engine committee were essentially completed by the end of December 2021. The Supervisory Board has completed its investigation into the diesel issues as far as the civil liability of the members of the boards are concerned. In light of this situation, the Supervisory Board dissolved the Spe Special Diesel Engine Committee with effect from the end of December 31st, 2021. Any measures connected with the diesel issue to be addressed in the future will be discussed directly in the full supervisory board plenary and prepared by the executive committee. The board of management will also report to the executive committee or the full supervisory board on current developments in connection with the diesel issue in future. The issues dealt with in the meetings of the Supervisory Board and its committees are presented in detail in the Supervisory Board report on the pages 12 to 14 of the annual report. Ladies and gentlemen, on the 9th of December 2021, the Supervisory Board and Board of Management issued the annual declaration of conformity with the recommendations of the German Corporate Governance Code in accordance with Section 161 of the German Stock Corporation Act. An explanation of all deviations from the recommendations can be found in the Declaration of Conformity. The Declaration of Conformity can be accessed under Corporate Governance on our investor relations website. More details on how the recommendations and suggestions of the German Corporate Governance Code have been implemented can be found in the section headed Corporate Governance, starting on page 43, and in the notes to the Consolidated Financial Statements on page 372 of the annual report. In 2020, the Audit Committee agreed a suitable procedure with the Board of Management for ongoing monitoring of the Volkswagen Group's related party transactions. 
No disclosures or approval decisions on the part of the supervisory board were required for related party transactions under statutory provisions in the reporting year. In this respect, the Board of Management also informed the Supervisory Board of further improvements. The report was checked by Ernest and Young. The Supervisory Board checked it and declared that after the final result, there are no, there is nothing to be hold, held against the declaration of the Board of Management when it comes to the dependency report. The Supervisory Board has asked Ernest and Young to look at the specific non-financial report 2021. This draws from the Corporate Social Responsibility Directive of the European Union. It is the target of this directive and the report to have transparency on ecological and social aspects in the EU. The supervisory board, according to its own account, under taking into account the results of Ernest and Young's and their checks of the combined uh, separate non-financial report for 2021, did not have any objections. Together with the board of management, we also resolved to prepare for the first time for fiscal 2021 the remuneration report report in accordance with Section 162 of the German Stock Corporation Act, as amended by the German Act of the Implementation of the Second Shareholders' Rights Directive. In this report, we explain the main features of the remuneration system for the members of the Board of Management and Supervisory Board, which was approved by the last annual general meeting. The remuneration report also contains an individualized breakdown of the re remuneration components provided to current and former members of the Board of Management. The Executive Committee prepared the resolution of the Supervisory Board concerning the preparation of the remuneration report. Ernest and Young, beyond the statutory checks, has checked as to whether not only whether it uh, includes all the disclosures required by law, but it also looked at the content and issued an unqualified report. The remuneration report, including the independent auditor's report, is described in the further information on the agenda. I would like to refer to the report of the supervisory board, which is available in writing. You can find it from page 10 onwards of the annual report. Dear shareholders, I will now speak about the changes on the Board of Management since the end of last uh, of the last annual general meeting. With effect, uh, as of 1st of July 2021, the Finance and IT Board position was divided into two separate board positions. Responsibility for finance was assigned to Dr. Arno Antlitz, who also held interim responsibility for IT until the appointment of a further member of the Board of Management. The Supervisory Board resolved in December 2021 to increase the number of members of the Group Board of Management and to reorganize the structure and functions of the Board in this context. As of 1st of January 2022, a new board division, Volkswagen Passenger Cars, was established, which from the same day was managed by Mr. Ralf Brandstetter. As of August 1st, 2022, Mr. Brandstetter will assume responsibility for the China division. On the 1st of July 2022 already, Mr. Thomas Schäfer will take over responsibility for the Volkswagen Passenger Car Board division from Mr. Brandstetter. Moreover, a new board division was established as of February 1st, new board division group sales, managed by Ms. Hildegard, Wart Hildegard Wartmann, with effect from the same date. On the 31st of January 2022, Ms. Hildegard Werner's term of office in the Volkswagen Acting Gesellschaft Board of Management came to an end. The responsibility for the Integrity and Legal Affairs Division, which she has led, passed to Dr. Manfred Dess with effect as of 1st of February 2022. Also with effect from February 1st, 2022, 
um, which had been held during the interim by Dr. Antlitz, Ms. Hauke Stars assumed responsibility for the IT board position. On behalf of the supervisory board, I want to thank Ms. Werner and the entire board of management for their high level of personal commitment and the results achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, the annual general meeting last year voted with more than 99% of the votes cast set to the settlement agreements that Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft concluded with Professor Winterkorn, Mr. Stadler and D&O Insurance after a clarification process of the diesel issue. The resolutions for consent of the AGM were um, attacked by two actions against the resolutions. The legal proceedings are in the first instance court already. Supervisory Board and the Board of Management are of the opinion that the attacks against the resolutions have no substance and that the resolutions are effective. The settlements, irrespective of these actions, are effective. They are proce processed according to the stipulated regulation. That means that, in particular, Professor Winterkorn and Mr. Stadler have made their contributions and D&O Insurance have made their settlement contributions as agreed upon. Volkswagen AG could therefore realize the advantages linked to the settlement agreements in their majority. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. I would now like to ask Dr. Dees to give the report of the Board of Management. Shareholders, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the entire Board of Management, I bid you welcome to this virtual annual general meeting of Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft. Volkswagen has made good progress in 2021. We are financially robust and our strategy is gaining traction. Our brands are stronger than ever before. We have the right cars for the markets, and we've been able to improve our position in the world's major regions. Our crisis management works. This is shown again in the current situation. In February, Russia attacked Ukraine. The effects of war are devastating. The images of war crimes in Ukraine are deeply disturbing. Millions of people have been forced to flee their country. Volkswagen is helping. At many of our sites, employees are collecting donations in kind. We are providing vehicles for aid organizations as the subsidiaries, VW Poznan, VW Motor Polska, and Skoda are supporting refugees and their families. They act as interpreters and they assist with visa applications. The majority of cable harnesses for our vehicles in Europe are manufactured in Ukraine. Together with our suppliers, our task force has been able to find quick, pragmatic solutions to significantly ease supply bottlenecks, a strong team performance. We managed to largely offset production shortages in Europe. To do that, we ramped up production at our factories in China and South Africa. America at short notice. At the same time, we're expanding cable harness production for Europe in other regions. We expect the supply context to normalize even in the event of a prolonged war. Our order situation is good. Followed by a successful first quarter, we have therefore confirmed our outlook for the full financial year. Last year, we again generated sound results. Group-wide, we increased sales by 12% to 250 billion euros, even though we built 2 million fewer cars than originally planned. We refocused production of our high-margin models and reduced discounts. Our financial services benefited from the rise in prices for used cars, and we consolidated Navistar, the US truck manufacturer, for the first time in our books. We nearly doubled the operating result before special items to 20 billion euros in 2021. The operating margin across the group was almost 8%. We reduced our overheads by 10% compared to 2019. As a result, we achieved our cost target earlier than planned. The net cash flow was at 8.6 billion euros, an increase 
of 35%. We have consequently laid the groundwork for vigorously driving forward the group restructuring in 2022. We want our shareholders to participate in this positive development. We are therefore proposing to you a dividend of seven euros and fifty per ordinary share and seven euros fifty-six per preferred share. We delivered in 2021, financially speaking, by becoming more resilient and uh, our earning power, and strategically too. We rearranged our brands last year, grouped into premium volume and sport brand groups. The goal, less complexity, more customer focus, new synergies through battery cells, charging infrastructure, software, and a common platform, the unified platform. Our premium brand group in 2021 performed particularly well. That was mainly due to the strong demand for Audi's Q3 and 5 model lines. Electric vehicles sold well too. Above all, the new models, Audi Q4 e-tron and the Audi e-tron GT. In total, Audi sold almost 60% more purely electric vehicles than the previous year. With its announcements that all new models being launched from 2026 on will be electric, Audi is breaking new ground in the premium market. For the first time, we have a distinctly separate design and positioning for the volume brands. We are addressing different customer groups directly, timeless and progressive, with the Volkswagen brand modern and solid with Soda, young and emotional with Seat and Cupra, leisure-oriented with the light commercial vehicles. The technical basis is always the same, the common platform for all brands. We now have models tailored specifically to suit regional markets. The result in the US, Volkswagen as a brand has generated profits for the first time in more than 10 years. In 2021, we sold more cars in America than we've done since 2013. The Atlas, Taos and Tiguan tick all the right boxes for our customers. The same goes for South America, where Volkswagen has managed the turnaround in 2021. Our colleagues are particularly proud of the Nevis. For the first time, we've developed a model in Latin America that we also produce in Europe. The European version is called the Tiger. In India, with the Skoda Kushak, we've got an attractive market offering again. We've doubled the sales here in Central and Eastern Europe. The sales of a Rapid Kamik and Karok are very encouraging. Set and Cupra appeal to our young customers with models such as the Set Arona, Ibiza, or the Cupra Fermento. We sold more cars on almost all markets than the previous year. The Cupra will guide Set into the electric future. In the first quarter, for the first time, we reported vehicle sales by brand group, particularly in the volume brand group, we can leverage even more synergies. Thomas Schaefer, as the new head of the volume group, uh, will start in July doing exactly that. In the sports brand, cars brand group, we've repositioned Bugatti in a joint company with Remac. The goal, electric hypercars. As a result, the brand Bugatti is no longer part of our portfolio. Porsche has proved in 2021 that e-mobility works for the brand. The Taycan sold even better than the 911. Return on sales was at 16.5%. This would be the perfect timing for an IPO. And this is why we've started a review process. Porsche would get even more entrepreneurial freedom and at the same time economies of scales and synergies for Porsche would be preserved. With the purchase of Navistar, the U.S. truck manufacturer, Trayton has now uh, improved its market position. It is now a global player with leading market position in Europe and North and South America, growing sales in the truck sector. Five years ago, we decided to convert our model portfolio to e-mobility in order to achieve the climate targets. Today, our customers can buy an electric alternative to almost all models. This means that our range of electric cars offers a larger choice 
than that of any other car maker. The ID3, the electric alternative to the Golf, the ID4, the counterpart to the Tiguan. And starting next year, we will offer an electric alternative for the Passat, the ID5 and ID6 round off and complement the ID family. With the ID Buzz, we now offer an electric alternative for the T7. Two months ago, the ID Buzz was presented to the world public. When I started with Volkswagen in 2015, I wanted to put the bully back on the road because it embodies everything that the Volkswagen brand stands for. Passion, freedom, reliability, optimism, appeal, likability, the dawning of a new area. For the legendary T1, several uh, concept cars were presented. None of them made it to uh, commercialization. E-mobility was the trigger for creating this modern incarnation of this cult classic because the electric motor takes up much less space than the internal combustion engines. The ID Buzz is uh, a space wonder with a dramatic uh, uptake and popularity. It's extremely popular. That's quite overwhelming. The ID Buzz shows we're talking about much more than a drivetrain. We're redefining the car. In 2021, every fourth electric car in Europe came from the Volkswagen Group. In Zwickau, we produced six electric models for Volkswagen, Audi, Seat, and Cupra. In Wolfsburg, we are converting the plants in Hanover and Emden to electric. And in Wolfsburg, production for the ID3 is scheduled to start in 2024. We plan to build the Volkswagen Trinity in Wolfsburg from 2026, a sedan with a flat body, high range, and a software architecture enabling autom autonomous driving. Last year, we decided to build the new factory to produce the Trinity, and we are s setting new standards with this. In addition, we're investing 800 million euros in a new development center. It'll be the most advanced of its kind in Germany. In the US, Around 8% of all EVs, which is the name for electric vehicles there, came from the Volkswagen Group, making a market share with electric vehicles double that of internal combustion engines. We sold almost 17,000 ID4s, more than two-thirds of these buyers are new customers. Already this year, we'll be offering eight electric models. In China, we sold 93,000 electric cars last year, four times as many as the previous year. We now offer five electric models from the ID family. With our ID cities doors, we've opened 120 new branches in city centers. Audi has also launched two electric models in 2021 on the Chinese market, the e-tron and the e-transport back. The e-mobility ramp-up is on plan. We sold from quarter to quarter more electric cars each quarter. Demand is rising. By the end of March, we had delivered almost 100,000 electric cars, 65% more than the previous year. We expect the mobility business to match profitability of our ICE business earlier than planned. Because we are rolling out our e-mobility toolkits and platforms across the board, converting a growing number of production plants and selling our technologies to competitors as Ford. In February, we intensified our partnership with Ford. At the annual general meeting two years ago, I said that Volkswagen was changing evolving away from its role as an automaker with cars from fascinating brands that are built with passionate and masterful engineering and skill through dealerships towards a company that shapes the mobility of tomorrow, fully connected with a constant stream of new features, safe and sustainable, and always in direct contact with customers. Our competitors are Tesla, BYD, Foxcom, CATL, Uber, and Cruise today. Last year, we presented a new group strategy called New Auto. The car is becoming the most complex and attractive digital and device. Autonomous driving is creating new sales and earnings potential. And this is why we're developing a new common platform, a single platform to build over 40 million vehicles on from 2026. We're reducing complexity. Software is the centerpiece of that. Our software company carried hired 100 additional 
developers last year. They work to make the software for autonomous driving in-house. We integrated the camera and software manufacturer Hella Aglaia and uh, acquired other tech companies. We bought patents from Bosch for several hundred million euros. Bosch has built up a lot of expertise in autonomous driving in recent years. We've set up a joint team to pick up even more speed. Already today, our ID customers can download the latest software updates without having to visit a workshop. With our most recent update, the vehicle not only automatically adapts its speed to that of the speed limits, it automatically slows down as it approaches road curves and roundabouts, and it changes lanes by itself, even. Moving software development 100% in-house is an entirely new approach that will define the life cycles and need two life cycles, i.e. 15 years in the automotive industry. We set an important course last year and are now moving into implementation. In Europe, we'll build six gigafactories by 2030. After Salzkedensch and Skelta in Sweden, we recently decided on the third location in Valencia in Spain. Together with the Spanish government, we are converting the country to electromobility. Volkswagen is investing 7 billion euros into battery cell production, the conversion of two plants, and the expansion of the charging infrastructure. We've electrified our German sites with e-cars such as the Golf and the Tiguan classes. We're electrifying the Spanish automotive market with small and compact cars. In Europe, we have introduced a fixed pricing model for charging in Europe. With one card, you can now have access to a network of over 300,000 charging points. In Düsseldorf, we've teamed up with BP to launch the first charger at an Aral retail site. We want to install 4,000 by the end of 2024. With the ID Buzz AD, we started, together with Argo AI, the test operation of our autonomous shuttles in Munich. We've achieved a major milestone in doing this, and we're aiming to offer the first autonomous shuttle service in Hamburg by 2025. We plan to complete the acquisition of Europe Car by the end of June. Our goal to provide a mobility service platform for all uh, mobility needs, whether you want to drive a short trip from A to B or via car sharing and rent a car for the long distance journey, journey with key stations and at key transport hubs like railway stations and airports. Individual mobility will still account for the largest share in the transportation sector in 2030 as one of the world's largest automotive groups were moving forward in the fight against climate change. In 2021, we reduced our carbon footprint further. Group-wide carbon emissions were reduced by 1.7 tons per newly produced vehicles, reducing or relating CO2 emissions, by the way, to the vehicle's entire life cycle. In production, we've set ourselves even more ambition goals. We aim to halve emissions of climate damaging gases in our factories by 2030. The STBI Independent Climate Protection Initiative recently confirmed that the group's climate targets support achieving the 1.5 degree target will be achieved. We also have other companies becoming climate neutral through our subsidiary MAN Energy Solutions. Last year, we supplied compressor systems for a Norwegian cement factory. From summer 24, 400 tons of uh, CO2 will be captured, annually compressed, liquefied, and sequestered, stored underground. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ukraine war has put in question the world order. The hope to end the war with sanctions quickly has not been successful. The Western community of states has not found uh, an answer, an effective response to Putin. Nevertheless, the premature farewell to the change through trade model is flawed. Block building cannot be the answers. Quite on the contrary, dovetailing economic zones and supply chains means we've got to talk to one another. We've got to solve global challenges such as the climate catastrophe through joint efforts hand in hand. For decades, globalization has brought peace, prosperity, and technological progress. With the export-oriented business model, Europe and Germany both are especially dependent 
on open markets and free trade. Over the past decades, our economic power has given us a strong voice in the world. Volkswagen believes in globalization and in further expanding its presence across the major regions in the world. China is the automotive market of the future. At over 90,000 local employees at 40 plants, Volkswagen Group China is clearly the market leader with 16% market share with the most successful automaker. In China, we're also systematically converting to e-mobility. We're using the further opening of the economy to expand our position in e-mobility with uh, companies such as Volkswagen Anhui and Audi FAW in Changchang, we, which are ma majority managed by us. We are developing our site in Anhui into a hub for e-mobility with a state-of-the-art R&D sensor in the Anhui province We've acquired a stake in the cell manufacturer Goshen to secure battery supplies. We are doubling the number of our software experts to 1,200. They will develop customer-specific applications for China. From summer, we again have a group brand member in the world's most innovative automotive market. Ralf Brandstetter will lead our successful business into the electric and autonomous driving future. In the U.S., Volkswagen, by converting to e-mobility, has an opportunity to become a relevant mobility company in the largest car market in the world. To this effect, we're investing 7.1 billion US dollars over the next five years with a in new electric cars, more local research and development, and the expansion of production offers the opportunity to enter the pickup market, a uh, pickup truck market in the US. We're developing the iconic brand scout, and uh, the supervisor board gave the go ahead yesterday to develop an electric pickup truck and an electric RUV in the US. We are established in our own company for this purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, let me summarize. Volkswagen in 2021 has demonstrated its resilience. We are well positioned financially speaking. With our crisis management, we emerged stronger from the crisis than we entered it. Our strategic decisions of recent years are proving successful. We've returned to profitability in the key regions of South and North America. The immobility ramp up is on track. And uh, we need to be in good shape, as in front of us is the biggest change in the history of the automobile. The car will soon become the most important digital device in people's lives, and it will drive on its own. With New Auto, we have the right strategy in place to play a leading role in the new mobility world. In the year 2022, we will also drive forward and forge ahead with our realignment restructuring Despite the geopolitical and economic challenges, our teams are keen to change the world of mobility. May I thank you, our shareholders, for traveling with us so far and staying with us. And I look forward to continuing the journey with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dies. Thank you, Dr. Dies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this particular point, we end the public transmission of our annual shareholders meeting, the AGM, and I'd like to say goodbye to those of you who joined us via this particular channel. Thank you very much for your interest in our Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft. Our shareholders and their representatives will be able to follow the further proceedings here via the shareholders portal. In order to register there, you need your login number and the internet access code. This information can be found in the top right-hand corner of your registration confirmation. I'd also like to draw your attention to the fact that the voting results will be available after the end of the meeting on the internet.